everybody and welcome back to the Girly Girl Bookworm. So I'm sorry that I took a little bit of a break just with everything going on. We're just trying to get used to a new routine and new way of living right now. I hope everybody is doing really, really well. Um, we're lucky enough that Patrick right now has been working. Um, well, he's been off school because all the schools are closed. Um, it sounds like they're about to start switching over to some distance learning. So we'll see what... <laughs> that turns out to be. So our schedules are kind of in the air going around lately. So just trying to find a new norm for now. Um, but I did manage to fit in Reese's um, pick for March, which was The Jet Setters by Amanda Iyer Ward. This book is about a woman named Charlotte and she's like 71 or 72 years old and she's got three children and they are Lee, who is the oldest daughter, Cord, who is the middle son, and then Reagan, who is the youngest daughter. And they've all kind of gone their own ways at this point because they're all grown children. Um, Reagan kind of um, is married to a man named Matt. Um, they've got two girls. Um, we know that their marriage doesn't seem very healthy. And then Lee, being the oldest, she... Um, is trying to be a movie star in LA. It's not quite working out for her. Um, and then Cord is in a relationship that his mother may not approve of. Um, so they, like I said, they've all kind of gone their own ways. They all have their own problems going on. And Charlotte decides that she's going to enter this contest, which is called the Jet Setters Contest, which if you win, like you submit an essay, and if you win, you win a cruise. So she wins this contest, and she brings along her three children with her. Um, and she wants to kind of use this as a way to bring all of the children back together, bring her family back together. Um, when they were younger, their father committed suicide. So it kind of, they've had a lot of tragedy in their life. Now, now we're going to get into the review part. Um, I didn't like this book at all. I ended up giving this book one star. The only good thing that this book had going for it is the writing style. The writing style is very easy to consume. Um, you keep reading even though you're not liking what you're reading. The pages still seem to fly by. But that's about where it ends. Um, I didn't like this book because there were way too many problems. The problems started becoming to feel like they were being very outlandish because there were so many and they just felt very unrealistic that there were this many problems in like one small family unit. Like obviously that's not true. Like obviously everybody could have their own problems but like it just felt like too much and too heavy. A lot of their problems were really tough problems but they were not handled or addressed at all. Um, the mother is almost blind to all of the problems that are going on with her own children. And even when she knew they were a problem and that they were a thing, all of a sudden she would like try to change the subject on them. Um, for example, like I said earlier, Reagan's marriage with Matt is not that great. And at one point, the kids bring up to their mom, Mom, like, we should talk about Reagan and Matt. And the mom was like, oh, and that coffee over there. Like, no. Like, if we're going to have all these problems and all these secrets and all this drama, like, you need to address them. And they were not addressed at all. Um, the ending, nobody really, like, there was no character growth, really. Like, everybody kind of went back to what they were doing. Like, it just, it did not go well at all and it's hard to talk about it without spoiling because so much goes on that is kind of spoilery especially with a contemporary novel because that's what they use to move the plot um because it is a very character driven book so based off of what the characters do and what they reveal is kind of how the story moves on um and I thought I would really like this because I, I picked it up thinking, like, with everything going on, you're not allowed to leave your house. Like, I could leave my house. I could go to the Mediterranean with this. And I just did not care. I did not 
feel like I was traveling. I didn't care about what they were seeing. Like, it was weird to have all these, like, tough, gritty moments with a character. And then all of a sudden they'd be like, and at the museum we saw it. Like, no. Like, it just didn't, didn't flow. Um, so, yeah. I don't recommend you pick this up. I've seen mixed reviews. There are people who really love it and gave it five stars or four stars. But then there's a lot of people who feel like I do. So, I kind of co with a caution instead like I would love to say like don't pick this up it's not worth your time but I worry about the fact that there are some people out there who really like it so I kind of say tread lightly maybe pick up a kindle copy or pick up a like library copy and give it a go before spending money on it like I spent a full $19 on this and I regret it immensely um because I this book was not for me at all um, so now we're going to kind of move into a spoilery section um, where I talk more in depth about what kind of went on and what really bothered me. So I really recommend you go back and not watch the rest of this if you haven't read the book or if you really don't care and you're not going to read it anyways and you want to hear more things about it, continue on. But I'm going to start getting really spoiler in this next section because this is a discussion portion. So if you're gone... Bye. Okay, so I have so many things to say. I feel like I need to put this in because I just, this book made me so infuriated. I feel like I need to go character by character. So we're going to start with Charlotte. Charlotte was the most annoying character, I think, in this entire book because she was so blind and didn't want to see anything. She felt very holier than thou, like, oh my gosh. I love my church and I love God. But then like the next second she'd be like, I rip out sex scenes from romance books and think about them. What? Like, I'm not saying you can't be religious and have a healthy sex life, but that was very weird. Um, I did not like when she would be like, I think my son might be gay. And then she'd be like, but then I'll lose my friend, Father Jefferson or whatever his name was. And it was like, your son needs you more than you need this priest. Come on. It was just really annoying how she just was so ignorant to so many things throughout this book and not wanting to see that her daughter was in an unhealthy marriage. She was more excited that she got to take care of her daughter than realize that her daughter was in an unhealthy marriage. The fact that she did not like that Cord was gay and it's okay, like... But to, like, try to completely ignore and not realize that your son is also an extreme, like, alcoholic. Like, sh come on. Like, love your child for who he is and help him figure out what he needs to do. And then, like, Lee's problems. Like, you made your daughter cover up the fact that your son, I mean, that your husband committed suicide. Do you realize how unhealthy that was for her? You made your child cover up the biggest lie ever from her siblings. What? And then this essay and this whole thing about this painter who, like, defiled her, like, and that was, the th like, she really thought that that was going to win her a contest. Hey, by the way, I was basically, like, raped by this guy. I also just, like, I don't know. Her storyline, like, just confused me in general because I at one point thought that Lee was not his child either because of the way she said that, like, she was deflowered and tarnished. Like, her mother would only find that out, I would think, as if she was already pregnant. And she does make a comment that when they have her child, when they have Lee, Winston says, oh, our daughter's really beautiful or something like that. And, like, in the back of her mind, she says, it's mine or she's mine. So I don't know if Lee is necessarily Winston's f daughter, which then makes her covering up his death even worse. Um, and then getting to Lee's story, like, Lee was just devastating to read about because – Obviously, she's been dealing with so many issues, and no one is really acknowledging them. Like, the fact that she commits to, like, tries to commit suicide in the end, and, like, her mom is still like, whatever. Like, and her whole, like, pregnancy scare was 
when she was sad about the miscarriage, and I was like, you did nothing to try to prevent, like, protect this baby anyways. You literally went on binge drinking sessions and blackout sessions and having sex with random people, and now you're upset that you miscarried. Seemed a little weird. And then to find out that she's not even, I didn't even know who the baby's father was to begin with. That was confusing. But to then realize that she put the trip on her ex's credit card and that her mother actually never won the contest was strange. Like, because it sounded like they had been apart for a while. So why does she still have his credit card information? Doesn't make sense. But that was just bizarre. And then we've got Cord. And my heart just breaks for Cord. But I just felt like his story was kind of unbelievable as well. Um, just watching how, like, I, alcoholism is kind of a trigger for me to begin with, but to watch how easy he went from, like, nothing to, like, everything, and I know that it can be that way for some alcoholics, but, like, it just, and the fact that nobody picked up on the fact that this was a problem for him was heartbreaking and annoying, um, and I just, like, loved his love with Giovanni. And then to... And I understand where Giovanni was coming from. But to completely break up with him, too, at the end and be like, I want nothing to do with you was hard to watch. Um, and I felt like... I don't know. The fact that he felt so uncomfortable in his skin, again. Like, I think my... Out of all the characters, he was probably one that I liked the most in the sense that, like... I felt like he was just the product of everything going on around him. Um, his business confused me. I didn't understand what his business actually was and what he was actually doing. But it sounds like it ended up turning out okay in that regard. I don't... That was confusing. I didn't like that storyline. I didn't know where that was going. And then Reagan, she was really confusing because I could not tell if her marriage was abusive or she just didn't love him because she made it sound for the longest time that Matt was hurting her. And it took until like Lee had the conversation with him and he revealed his affair that I was like, Oh, this doesn't sound abusive at all. This just sounds like he fell in love with somebody else and that like, they're just unhealthy. Like they already started off as unhealthy. So then I was wondering is she kind of mirroring the fact that her father was abusive and, like, putting it on him even though he wasn't being abusive at all? Because I was confused because when they have sex on the boat, I was like, girl, isn't he hurting you? Why are you willing to, like, have sex with him to try to find love again? It was very strange. And to find that she, like, set up the entire affair to begin with was awful. I didn't like that at all. Like, that's no way to get out of a marriage. Do not set your husband up to have an affair so that way you have ammo against him. That's disgusting and horrible. It was bad enough that I already thought he was abusing you. And then to, like, actually be like, oh, yeah, I set up this affair. And then, like I said, at the end it feels like they all, like, kind of just, like, go their own ways. Like, they are not any better from going through this experience. Um... They're all just kind of left in shambles again. Like, I get, like Reagan is now going to have to go through a divorce because she's crazy. Lee is still super unhealthy and just tried to kill herself and just had a miscarriage, so she's not going to do well. Um, Cord just had his fiancé leave him. I guess he's got the good company. And he went back to drinking, so he's, like, all in shambles. And then Charlotte is just blind to everything and does not care. So she's probably going to go live her life and keep reading her sex novels. The fact, oh, her affair thing with anybody who had legs in her head and then Paolo's who gave into it did not believe that storyline at all. It just didn't make any sense to me. I don't understand how she got with him. Like, I don't, like, she just, like, looked at him and then all of a sudden now he's, and, like, he didn't want anything to do with her and then out of nowhere he was like, actually... Let me teach you about Rome, and then all of a sudden, like, let's have sex. Like, it just did not make much sense. So, overall, this book was a hot mess express for me. Please let me know what you thought down below if you decide to give this one a go. The pe There was a couple people that I was talking to while I was reading this book, and almost everybody, hands down, felt the very exact same way as I did with the fact that this just was not a good book. And it makes me nervous for what April is going to be like, because, but January I liked. It wasn't bad. I didn't love it, but it was, it was okay. February I really liked. This one tanked. So I'm like, 
are we going to make it through 12 months or am I going to give up? <laughs> because I'm nervous um, after this one. I don't know why this was chosen. I know she likes to pick like women authors about women um, or like stories really centered about women. But like this one was not a good choice. I don't know what she read because I did not read the same thing for sure. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you like these videos. Should I continue doing these videos? Um, yeah, and I'll see you guys really soon. Bye, everybody.